Eucharist. This restaurant already have been here for 130 years and uh, it's one of the seven most cool restaurants in the world, that's what I read. I love how everybody entering just straight away filming, filming that beautiful interior. Now I feel cringy. Now I'm standing in front of rather impressive buildings. Some people call it even sinister. And that's the Parliament of Romania. Let's take a closer look. I like how these guys decided to park their car so they can take the coolest picture ever in the whole of Bucharest. Look at that. So impressive. Those angles. Amazing. In addition to that around the parliament, there are a bunch of buildings like this and they're all are different institutions of its own as well as, at least now I assume, some of them are just houses. Nice to see all these huge monumental buildings around here. They look in a really nice, well-preserved condition. Even though back in uh, communist Czechoslovakia times, um, a big chunk of the city center or district or the parliament is where we hanged around yesterday. Um, all these similarly looking buildings were built just then for the reason of um, policy of systematization. So the idea was to turn that a district of administrative buildings, so the institutions, so the ministries are supposed to be there and they still are, but that resulted in demolishments of monasteries, synagogues and many other things that historically had their place there. Like I must say, I miss streets like this one. Uh, even though this is exactly the district that was destroyed and rebuilt in favor of huge buildings more like that, you know. Uh, but this is something that's lacking in the Netherlands. That's why, time to time, it is nice to walk wide streets, nice to again get this feeling of a grandiose city architecture, whereas, uh, you know, it's so nice to have a combination with it also being like nice and cozy and cute. Today we're trying to go to the parliament. Let's do this. So difficult to get in. Such a huge area to cover before you can actually enter. Oh, well, we're almost there. So I got pretty lucky because uh, they sold out for all the other times and in the morning it was the right choice for me to go here because uh, apparently some people cancel. I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting in. In the meantime, can check out this exhibition 
because there's still a few minutes before the tour starts. Crazy to think that uh, this actually was all finished in the 90s and started in the 80s. Communism making marbles and marbles. All right, so I have just visited the parliament. It was initiated by the wife of Ceausescu, who has been sort of like a local communist leader for a while he's like a local Stalin I suppose uh, I think especially due to this pursuit of trying to build this monstrous gargantuous building to manifest the supremacy of the socialism communism so his wife started to build this in the 1984 this building was finished in just about five years everything was constructed so like as they said 70 percent was finished by then basically this building is one of the craziest buildings i suppose it's second biggest administrative building in the world it is super huge super heavy it has a lot of rooms that i'm not sure in how active use they are according to what they say i think it's also was crazy to hear that each of these conference buildings are apparently like the smallest is 370 square meters the others are up to like 11 1200 so all in all it's just crazy to think why would anyone i suppose in the first place want to build something like this as i also mentioned before the parliament building is the main point of the civic center that started to be developed during the Churchesque times. So the idea was to pretty much demolish the historic center and make something, again, more grandiose, more cool, to make it sort of like a administrative downtown. And that's where all the ministries were happening, that's where parliament is living, and that's where now, because of unnecessary, many buildings turned into apartment houses. The most interesting part of all the decorations is that they really like to use the symbol which is pretty much this pattern that you may notice in the carpets, in the marble floors, pictogram of how this building looks from above. And of course the parliament is uh, actively used for different events. We are we're only be able to admit the ground floor which uh, was supposed to be used for like official receptions and stuff. I suppose normally the deputies are working on the upper floors, like the parliament itself. And uh, we sort of pretty much saw what, what is possible to like to rent out. One of the small conference rooms, apparently, you would be able to rent for about 5,000 euros for the whole day. If it's not possible to film something in Vatican, the Romanian House of Parliament is used for that. sold out but they have one place exactly for me for the next one so visiting the house of Ceausescu in a bit so I've just visited Spring Palace or also known as the house of Ceausescu as it was evident 
they indeed get super inspired by French interior design. I mean, I think they really tried to encapsulate their own idea of living a good life because Ceausescu himself and his wife coming from um, peasants with uh, not having like much education, for example, I think um, Ceausescu finished four years of school and um, that's why he was still taking lessons while being the leader of Romania in politics. He had many advisors. He was introducing some other policies, but um, I guess that's a whole different conversation. As you can see, the house, even though y you may think that it's like kind of a rich person trying to recreate something that is out of their culture, it still looks like it's done relatively well. Like it doesn't feel too off or distasteful when uh, something like this would be done today and I think a lot of times people uh, do it in a cheap way you know trying to live this lavish luxurious life at this lavish interiors and fake them here I think they use many resources for it to be as representable as it is crazy to think that this whole house was untouched uh, during the revolution so that Ceausescu fled and um, pretty much army and secret police took control over the house uh, one after the other that's why there were not really marauders nothing was really stolen maybe some small things like some ashtrays a lot of people believed that the stuff inside of the house was made of gold or something but um, you know, none of this was of course true it would be ridiculously expensive something like this was and also I suppose ridiculously unpractical as well yet this is very rich people mention and interestingly enough it was initially built by a communist leader that was right before Ceausescu so it was finished around the time when uh, this uh, leader passed away and Ceausescu took the reins so Technically, his family was the only residence of the house, and it was adjusted to their own needs. So there is a monument of Michael Jackson over there. Apparently, after the revolution in 1989, Michael Jackson was the first major celebrity who visited uh, non-communist Romania. And I think he had a concert here or something? So he was the, to show support and uh, I suppose that became such a big thing to the point that they decided to commemorate uh, him with this monument in the park, but uh, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> in places like this you could call Bucharest uh, Little Paris. It is a Romanian Athenium. It is a philharmonic and a theater that has been around since the end of the 19th century. Pretty much was built privately by a rich family because it also used to be territory that they own and they decided to find a house to the Roman Athenium cultural society that pretty much led to this theater now carrying its name and now it is carries the name of the Gheorghe Enescu who is a famous composer of Romania funny to see that uh, the benches that you can see over there are a lot of times just for a single person like I know that normally you would call it a chair then but it's strange to see it in the park that uh, you have like a whole row with uh, single seaters uh, next to one another <laughs>
fact, in the Metropolitan Technica station, you could see that the floor is still made of marble, but unintentionally, they found out that in many of those marble pieces, you see the white patterns, uh, these are the fossils. So that makes this floor a little bit more special and makes up for an additional fun fact. What's uh, pretty good about Bucharest is that it is full of different parks and gardens. Um, the conditions of some of them sometimes may be questionable. Uh, but I bet, you know, in the warmer times, it's still a blast to be in the nature, uh, like this little oasis inside of the concrete jungles that people live in. Um, but other than that, I think it's really nice to have so much greenery around the city. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can enjoy some time off from the mundane of the life in a metropolis. Damn, the university is protected so much, Jesus Christ. Well, I'll be there for just for a moment. This temple-like building is the Polytechnical University of Bucharest. It has uh, quite a big territory and has been around for 200 years, over 200 years at this point. And uh, I think this building itself looks pretty cool. The interior is uh, also quite interesting. I am afraid I won't be able to enter today because it's Sunday, but um, I'll be making sure to share some photos. As you can see, this is the map of the campus, and uh, it's a pretty big campus you know, for one of the biggest universities out here. of this monastery doesn't seem like it's too far from here anymore uh, yeah let's see I don't know there's well this is the closest I really want to get right now because it's a bit too sketchy there's definitely a place where it makes sense to go if you have a car for the name of Bucharest and how it began. So Bukur was a shepherd that allegedly built this church and also started, gave the beginning and the name to the whole city. However, um, people also say that this church is much more modern than rather than the time when Bukur actually lived. But uh, either way, it is the place where it all started. And this is the Radovoda Monastery. So I'm walking the supposedly Romanian version of uh, Champs-Élysées because it's a really wide boulevard 
it has this rather grandiose buildings left and right. It's interesting that we're sort of going all the way straight into the main focal point of the whole district, which is the parliament. So another interesting thing, right behind the parliament, you know, the uh, palace that was supposed to be uh, the main residence for Ceausescu before he, uh, well, stopped being the leader of the country. Um, they are now building a humongous Orthodox church. Apparently, it is supposed to be the biggest Orthodox church temple in the whole world. And uh, from what I understood, not many people are extremely happy about it. Even though there is some symbolism, you know, that they are building it to counter what Ceausescu did for the religion and like for demolishing all this, all the quarter behind me because like churches, synagogues, some other places were just removed from here. And uh, the fact people are not happy because a lot of taxpayer money is going into that. That's pretty much it. So. Uh, according to, to like researches so you never know it's still being finished and uh, curious to see maybe in a few years or maybe even sooner how it's gonna turn out